Good afternoon, everybody. We are delighted today to have a special briefing from Stephen Rapp, our ambassador at large and head of the Office of Global Criminal Justice. Uh, he'll be joined by Ambassador Don Yamamoto, who is Acting Assistant Secretary for the Africa Bureau. Uh, let me, without further ado, turn it over to them, Ambassador Rapp. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Toria, for your introduction. I'm very pleased to be here today with uh, Don Yamamoto, the Acting Assistant Secretary in the Africa Bureau, and, and also uh, uh, with a dear friend and former colleague from the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, Fatou Bensouda, who now serves as the Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. We're here today to announce the designation of additional fugitives for a reward for which a reward can be paid under recent legislation to expand the State Department's long-standing War Crimes Rewards Program. We're announcing today that the Secretary of State will offer up to $5 million for information leading to the arrest, the transfer, or conviction of three top leaders of the LRA, the Lord's Resistance Army, Joseph Kony, Okat Odiambo, and Dominic Ungwin, as well as the leader of the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda known as the FDLR, Sylvest Mutachimura. The nine fugitives that had earlier been designated for the ICTR, the Rwanda Tribunal, will remain on the list. Accountability is a key pillar of the United States Atrocity Prevention Initiative and our national security strategy, which states that the end of impunity and the promotion of justice are not just moral imperatives, they're stabilizing forces in international affairs. We act today so that there can be justice for the innocent men, women, and children who've been subjected to mass murder, to rape, to amputation, enslavement, and other atrocities. I'd like to tell you just a little about this program and its expansion. It's managed by my office, the Office of Global Criminal Justice here at the State Department. It originally offered rewards for information leading to the arrest or conviction of individuals indicted by the three international tribunals that were created for the former Yugoslavia, for Rwanda, and Sierra Leone. Since 1998, our ability to pay these rewards has proven to be a valuable tool for the United States government to promote accountability for the worst crimes known to humankind by generating valuable tips that enable authorities to track down the world's most notorious fugitives from justice. In the past two, two years alone, we've made 14 payments at an average of about 400,000 per person, with a large payment being $2 million. The actual amount depends on a range of factors, including the risk to the informant, the value of the information, and the level of the alleged perpetrator. To date, with the assistance of the War Crimes Reward Programs, no indictee remains at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. 161 persons were charged. All of them have been brought to justice. In addition, out of the 92 individuals indicted by the Rwanda Tribunal, only nine have yet to be apprehended. And these nine individuals are still subject to rewards of up to five million for information leading to their capture. This program has sent a strong message to those committing atrocities that the deeds that they have done, for those deeds, they will have to answer in court. Nevertheless, while the, pres the program has achieved great success with these three tribunals, it risks becoming obsolete as they gain custody of their last remaining fugitives. To that end, we began to advocate for an expansion of the program to bolster our ongoing efforts to bring other alleged war criminals to justice. In early 2012, Congressman Edward Royce, who then headed a subcommittee and now chairs the full House Foreign Affairs Committee, and Secretary Kerry, who chaired Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate and now, of course, heads our department, introduced bipartisan legislation to expand and modernize this program. The bill passed both houses unanimously with a final legislative approval on January 1, 2013. On January 15, 2013, President Obama signed the legislation into U.S. law. Under this expanded program, the Secretary of State, after interagency consultation and on notice to Congress, may designate individuals for whom rewards may be offered for information leading to their arrest, transfer, or conviction. The designated individuals must be foreign nationals accused by any 
international tribunal, including mixed or hybrid courts, for crimes against humanity, genocide, or war crimes. This includes the International Criminal Court, but also new mixed courts that may be established in places such as the Democratic Republic of Congo or for Syria. To that end, the expanded program now targets the alleged perpetrators of the worst atrocities, some of whom have evaded justice for more than a decade. The LRA is one of the world's most brutal armed groups and has survived for over 20 years by abducting women and children and forcing them to serve as porters, sex slaves, and fighters. The International Criminal Court has issued arrest warrants for Joseph Kony and other top LRA leaders on charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity. For too long, the DRC has been plagued by conflict, displacement, and insecurity. Innocent civilians have suffered continued atrocities at the hands of armed groups such as the FDLR and M23 that support themselves by pillage of the population and exploitation of precious minerals. Last April, President Obama speaking at the U.S. Holocaust Museum and launching our Atrocity Prevention Initiative warned major criminals everywhere to be on notice. We will not relent in bringing you to justice. Today we're announcing that we will provide the means to help achieve their arrest, transfer, and conviction. Thank you and I'll yield to questions. We will take a few questions. All right, so crystal clear this week. That's excellent. Um, let me just uh, take this opportunity to thank Ambassador Rapp. I don't know if Ambassador, this is something you can. Okay, at least have a question. I don't know if this. Miss um, Love at CNN. Sorry, hi. Um, I don't know if this is something you can specifically talk about, but the U.S. has been, you know, engaged in efforts to try and track down Joseph Kony. So I'm wondering. You know, where those efforts stand, do you feel that you have a good handle on where he is? There was some talk under Secretary Clinton about even using drone technology to find him. Well, I, I want to yield to Don on that, but I do want to say that, that this uh, program, uh, this expansion was strongly supported by, uh, by the Pentagon and by those involved in that effort, and, and they see this, uh, this reward as something that could provide key intelligence about the location of, of Coney and the others. But as to, as to the events of the last few days in the CAR and, and the effect of that, let me yield to Assistant Secretary Yamamoto. Uh, just a couple of comments. Is the the um, United States remains very committed to the uh, counter-LRA program, along with our, our partners. And of course, right now, is even though we've taken a pause because of the developments in Bangui and, and how the situation there is unfolding, is remain committed, and we're going to use all facilities and all um, technology at our hands to try to find and locate uh, Coney and his group. Other questions? Actually, I do. So, uh, on the programs in general, majority of these uh, terrorist leaders under this rewards for justice program are from the AFPAC region, and despite you being announcing $25 million or $10 million, $5 million, nothing has come through. Can you give us a sense what kind of information you are getting from the region or you have not been able any to have any success in this region to get any information from these leaders? Well, and understand, in the department we have three rewards programs, one in the counterterrorism area that's, that's made offers, and, and I believe it's been productive, but uh, that particular uh, program is, is administered through our Diplomatic Security uh, uh, Bureau, and then uh, we also have a program uh, for uh, what was narcotics solely, but under this legislation will include transnational organized crime, and, and that's administered by the, uh, by the Office of Narcotics and Law Enforcement. So uh, I can't, uh, we'll be glad to follow up on that question, that, uh, but in terms of the specific uh, CT program and the offer of, for individuals in the uh, Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan area, I, I think that's something that needs to be directed to that program. Here today we're talking about war crimes, which are uh, situations where international or internationalized courts have sought people for atrocity crimes, for, for crimes against humanity, genocide, war crimes. and. Uh, and we can offer rewards and, and, and pay those. And as we've noted here, it has been successful, and we've been able, just during my tenure, to make, make 14 payments and to, to help bring some of the last fugitives to justice at the Yugoslavia and Rwanda tribunals. 
Yes, uh, uh, my name is Said Erika from Uncle Daily Newspaper. There is a newly formed rapid deployment force for North Africa. Will it be involved in any of this effort in pursuit of these four crimes? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I would defer um, to the Africa Command and Department of Defense on the, the, pre the precise, um, uh, you know, rationale and reasons and, and goals and objectives of the, uh, the specialized force. Um, but I, I think right now is is uh, how we're going after, let's say, the LRA and others. It remains a very committed approach, you know, interagency, Department of Defense, State Department, and of course our regional partners, particularly Uganda. Any other questions? Thank you all very much. We would refer you also to the Secretary's blog post uh, on Huffington Post today on this same subject. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Tori.